Hey guys, it's your pal Dave from notesandvolts.com and in this video we're going to talk about an important topic called audio etiquette. A lot of you may be working at home for the first time and coming to terms with voice conferencing software like Discord, Skype, or Zoom. Or you may be a game streamer who's talking to your teammates on Discord and also talking to your chat on Twitch. The concept of audio etiquette is keeping unwanted noises out of your conference call by muting your mic when necessary. Your coworkers don't need to hear you cough, sneeze, yell at your kids, or tell the cat to get off the table for the fifth time. Likewise, your teammates in game chat don't need to hear you thanking Twitch donations or dealing with other streaming business. Radio broadcasters are very aware of audio etiquette and have a device called a cough button to deal with it. A cough button is a large, easy to access button that the broadcaster can hit when they feel a cough or a sneeze coming on, and this immediately mutes their microphone. Now, I haven't really seen one of these for home use, so I thought I'd make one, and I call it the talker. So here is the talker. It's got a big illuminated arcade button that you can hit to mute your mic. It has three modes, push to talk, push to mute, or toggle on and off. It has a USB port to connect to the computer and a quarter inch jack to connect a foot switch for gamers who want to mute their mic with a foot switch instead of using the button. To use the talker, all you need is a USB cable connect it to your computer. Plug it in and that will power it up. So I mainly made this device for Discord, but it should work with other software because it's simply putting out hotkey commands when you push the button. All you need to do is set it to the mode you want and then push the button to mute or unmute your audio. Now if you want to use it with a foot switch, all you need is one of these piano sustain pedals with a quarter inch plug. You want to make sure the one you get is a normally open type. I always try to get the type with a switch that lets you select normally open or normally closed. Now just plug it in to the jack and when you push the switch, there you go, it activates the mute. To set up the talker in Discord, you're going to want to first add a couple of keybinds. So go to your settings menu, go to keybinds, and you're going to want to add push to mute and toggle mute. So to add a keybind, click the add a keybind button, and you'll get an unassigned keybind. Click on the drop down and go to push to mute. And now make sure your talker is in push to mute mode. So that's the center mode there and record a keybind. Now just push the button and it will populate to what the talker is currently set to, which is Control Shift L. Now stop recording and we're all set. Now if you want to change that to a different key combination, you can in the software. I'll show you how in a minute. Now you want to also add a toggle mute function. Once again, set the talker to toggle mode record the key bind, stop recording, and by default it's set to control shift semicolon, but you can change it in the software as well. Now to set your push to talk mode, you're going to want to go to voice and video and set your push to talk shortcut, set the talker to push to talk mode, edit, push it, right now it's set to Control Shift K, stop recording, now it's set. Now just realize if you want to use push to talk, you have to make sure that this setting is on. If you want to use the push to mute or toggle modes, you have to make sure that this mode is off. So we're going to set it off for now and we'll check out toggle and push to mute. Now if you go to your main Discord page, this is your, your mic mute and unmute indicator. So if I set my talker to push to mute and hit the button, you'll see that indicator mutes as long as I hold the button down. If I let it go, it unmutes. So I'll basically it mutes when I push the button. If I set it to toggle mode, you push the button once, you'll mute the mic, 
push it again, you unmute. Now, if you want to enable push to talk, go back to your settings, go to voice and video and set the push to talk checkbox. Now, if we go back to our main page and go to a voice channel, you'll see my icon here. When I push the button, you'll see I go live. That's the green ring. And when I release the button, I am muted. So it basically is acting as a push to talk switch, which is what we want. So to make your own version of this, these are the parts you need. So you're gonna need one of these LED light up arcade buttons. You're gonna need a quarter inch mono phone jack. You're gonna need a three position on off on toggle switch. You're gonna need a 220 ohm resistor some M3 screws and to put the case together I'm using these heat set brass inserts from McMaster car and I find these work really well you you set them into the plastic and they will keep the screw from stripping out they're they're very solid and they work really well you'll also need one of these panel mount USB connectors with a micro USB on the other end. So let's take a look at how you're actually going to build the circuit. So this circuit is so basic, I didn't draw a schematic for it. I drew a wiring diagram that hopefully will be a little easier for beginners to understand. You can start by connecting the ground. So here's the ground pin on the Teensy LC. And I'm using this tab on my audio jack as a connection point. So I'm running one wire from ground to the tab. I'm running a second wire from that tab to the middle pin of my toggle switch and then a third wire from that tab to one side of my push button. Also off that push button I have a 220 ohm resistor going to the minus leg of my LED. Now from the positive leg of my LED I'm going to run a wire to input five on the Teensy board. And there it is right there. On my toggle switch, I'm gonna run one wire from pin one to one side of the switch and another wire from input two to the second side of the switch. The push button, I'm gonna run a wire to the tip terminal on my phone jack and then uh, connect a second wire to that terminal and bring it to input zero. On the second page, I'll actually include a picture of how my circuit is wired. So here you can see the phone jack with the ground pins connected to that sleeve terminal. Here you can see the, uh, the USB adapter cable, how it snakes through and connects to the Teensy board. Now the Teensy board is so light, I actually just left it floating in the in the uh, enclosure now you could tape it down or glue it down or or whatever but I, it just seemed like the wires were holding it in place and it seemed okay to me now one interesting thing to note on the button you'll have four pins two of the pins on my button were a kind of gold color and these were the button contact switches so one of those pins I need to send to my audio jack and then send that back to the Teensy input zero. The other side goes to ground. Now on the other side of the button, there's two pins that are more of a coppery color and these were the LED pins and one is marked with a plus and the other with a minus. So I want to take my plus terminal and you want to make sure you get these right or the LED won't light up. You want to take that plus terminal and run a wire to pin 5 or input 5 on the Teensy board. Now on the minus terminal, we need that resistor, that 220 ohm resistor between that minus terminal and ground. So to attach the resistor, I use the pins of the button to hold it in place. So notice that one side of the resistor is going to that minus pin 
on the button, on the LED side of the, of the button. And the other side of the resistor is going to this ground tab along with the ground wire. So if you follow the flow, we've got power coming from the TNT board into the LED, out of the minus pin of the LED through the 220 ohm resistor into the ground pin. So this just gives the resistor something to hold on to so it's not just kind of floating in space because the resistor legs aren't that strong and this will keep it nicely protected. On the third page of the manual, I included the graphics. So you can print these out in full size. I included a little uh, size marker. This is a one centimeter square. So when you print this out, this little box should measure one centimeter on all size, and then you'll know you got it the right size. So this is how I make my, uh, my labels for these type of projects. What I do is I print out the graphics on some matte photo paper, just on a uh, regular inkjet printer, and then I cut them out. So I carefully cut around the edge. Then I place it on some laminating sheet. This is a standard office laminator. And I put, I made a bunch cause they're just very small, but I put them on a laminating sheet and run them through an office laminator. And that gives them this strong kind of backing. And then on the back, I put some of this 3M 467MP double-sided adhesive paper. So I peel off one side, stick it to the back of the lamination, and then when I'm ready to go, I cut it out. I'll cut this shape out, leaving just a little bit of lamination around the edge. So I don't cut it right to the edge. I want that lamination to remain sealed. And once I've got it cut out, I can just peel off the back of this paper and stick it down and you'll find it's actually very durable. So the enclosure itself is 3D printed and I'm going to include the STL files for this so you can print your own. So you can print it in ABS or any other plastic you want. The heat set inserts can be installed with a soldering iron so heat up your iron. Make sure you don't hold in your hand. Press press the uh, insert on the end and sort of press it in place and you'll find it will sink right into the plastic and just try to put get it in enough you you don't need to use any force it's just going to sink into the plastic and once it's level with the top then just remove the iron and let it cool down and you'll find you'll have a very solid joint i'll include a list of all the parts i use on the notes and volts website i'll put a link in the comment to the video i also got some uh, stick-on rubber feet for the bottom of the panel that just keeps it from sliding around on your desk so once you got it all together just use some m3 screws and fasten the two sides of the enclosure together and that is it so now let's talk about the 3D printed enclosure. So I'm going to include two STL files, one for the top of the enclosure, one for the base, and just load them up into your slicing software for your 3D printer. So I'm using Simplify 3D. Now you want to orient the part on your bed like this, face down. And I would also suggest you add some supports to these, these holes in the back of the enclosure. So in this software, you can just generate some automatic supports and it'll just put them where it thinks it needs them. These supports can be easily removed after the part is printed. And that just keeps the top from sagging down when it's printed. Once you've done that, open up your bottom plate and print it face down so you'll see the screw holes have a little a little indent in there so make sure that's pointed upwards but there it is send it off to your printer i used abs for mine but you can use whatever plastic you normally use all right let's take a look at the software so here's the program for the talker and once again we're using a teensy lc processor so if you've never used a teensy processor before you're going to need to go to the Teensy website, which is listed here, and download the Teensy Loader extension for your Arduino software. Now, when you install the Teensy software, it's going to ask you if you want to install any extra libraries, and I would just click them all and install them all because they're all pretty good and useful. 
And this software uses the bounce library, so you want to make sure you have that. Now, once the Teensy Loader is installed, you're going to get some extra options in your tools menu. So you're going to want to set your board settings like this. So under board type, you're going to select Teensy LC. The USB type is going to be set to keyboard. So make sure your USB type is set to keyboard. That's basically going to turn our little device here into a simulated keyboard that can send key commands out. And CPU speed, you can just leave it at 48 megahertz. And then just go down to your port and make sure your Teensy board shows up, Teensy LC. Once you're done, just hit the upload button and it should pop up the Teensy loader and upload to your Teensy board. Like I said earlier, the software, I preset some key combinations for the different modes, but you can change those to whatever you want. So if you scroll down here, these are your key commands. So for the toggle mode, the modifier key, so remember modifier can be shift, alt, or control. So I've got modifier key control, modifier key shift. So that's control and shift. So you can change the modifiers from control to shift or alt shift or whatever you want, whatever combination you like. Now you can set two modifier keys. So control shift, alt shift, or you could get rid of all of them. If you just want to key press, just comment out these two lines and you won't get any modifier key. This line here sets your key press. So this is the K key. So you can see that my toggle mode is control shift K. If you want to change that, I made a list of all the key types you can have. So keys A to Z, key number, number keys, key one to zero, function keys, whatever you want. So the talk mode is basically control shift semicolon and the push to mute mode is control shift l so once you upload your teensy loader should pop up and you should see done uploading in the bottom of the window and you're good to go so there you go guys the talker project i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you build your own as always i like to sincerely thank my patrons on patreon thank you for helping to make these projects possible so that's it for now. I'll be back soon with a new project. Until then, stay safe.